we're going to um, move on very quickly to share decision making. So I just want to say that I'm only doing uh, 10 minutes on shared decision making, and I'll tell you why. Uh, you have a lot of resources in your packet on shared decision making. There's a lot of great materials that are already out there. Um, AHRQ puts out a lot of good tools. You'll see lots of stuff on there that you can, you can go further into. We thought we'd talk about it briefly because it's really the, I feel like it's the culmination of everything that we've been doing in training and that you've all already been doing in your work. So it's kind of like a little bit of like a celebratory um, talk. So usually in the past, or mostly shared decision making is about um, healthcare providers and patients working on coming to, traditionally it's been around a specific type of treatment when there's uh, a health problem that where there's a lot of different options for treatments with benefits and risks and how do you help people decide. So that's what it's, that's what it came out of, um, but it's slowly shifting to be used as well in chronic conditions and certainly are chronically, um, are the patients, the people that we work with who have chronic conditions may have you know, worse health problems that do require you know, a, a specific type of treatment. Um, so there's really, there's, there's, there's different steps. So the first step is about involving the person. So again, this is already what you're already doing and we've spent three days talking about how do we engage people, um, letting people know that there's choices, including family and friends is appropriate really trying to use health literacy principles and health education principles to summarize the um, problem so that people really understand it. The second step is helping people explore and compare treatment options. So what are the benefits and risks of each? Go back to the health literacy stuff. This can be very confusing for people, risks and benefits, um, you know, especially for people who may not have strong fundamental literacy skills or scientific skills, um, assessing what people already know, and of course using teach back. The third step is really about assessing values and preferences, so including the family and the you know the larger uh, patient, the larger community, whoever that is for the person, um, and having people talk and get at what's most important to them, right? So is it things like the cost, how long it's gonna to take to recover, having a specific level of functionality, you know, whatever it might be. Um, doing this by asking open-ended questions, actively listening and reflecting. The fourth step is we have to actually reach a decision. Remember we talked about the motiv in motivational interviewing, where sometimes we can just go on and on and on with open-ended questions and reflecting and summarizing. We actually have to come to some sort of conclusion. Um, figure out if they need additional resources. Uh, think about barriers ahead of time and kind of troubleshoot those. Confirming the decision with teach back and then scheduling follow up. And then the fifth step is evaluating the decision. So tracking progress, following up on how it's going, reassessing and thinking about if there's anything new that needs to come up. Um, so I know that was like less than five minutes, mm -hmm. but the reason I did that, does anyone see any like, any similarities on what you've all been doing in your work? Have people heard of this shared decision making process? Mm -hmm. So I've given you resources, there are, um, decision aids that I've given you links to when people have a particular condition that they are trying to decide about the correct uh, treatment for. You can download these, like it's a list of questions and a list of things for people to consider if those are helpful for you. Um, but again, we really include this because it really does have sort of summarize care management nicely in that everything we're doing is about um, you know shared decision We have a break, so we're going to come back at 2.30. We'll come back at 2.30. Thanks.